Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam as translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And this is Canto 5, um, Chapter 23. And we're starting the chapter. It's a little summary before the chapter begins. It explains what we can expect to hear about in the, in the chapter. So we'll start with the summary. And this is the structure of the universe. And we heard about the, the sun, planet, the sun god, the functions of the sun planet, and we heard about the description of the, the mechanics, if you would, of the planets. And uh, we heard about the moon, the situation of the moon, and what, how the moon affects the rest of the uh, material universe. And now we're going to hear about something called the Sishumar planetary systems, which are the topmost planetary systems. And it's chapter 23. The Sishumar planetary systems. This chapter describes how all the planetary systems take shelter of the pole star Dhruva Loka. It also describes the totality of these planetary systems to be Sishumar, another expansion of the external body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Dhruva Loka the abode of Lord Vishnu within this universe is situated 1,300,000 yojanas from the seven stars. In the planetary system of Dhruvaloka are the planets of the fire god, Indra, Prajapati, Kasyapa, and Dharma, all of whom are very respectful to the great devotee Dhruva, who lives on the pole star. Like bulls yoked to a central pivot, all the planetary systems revolve around Dhruva Loka, impelled by eternal time. Those who worship the Virata Purush, the universal form of the Lord, conceive of this entire rotating system of planets as an animal known as Sishumar. This imaginary Sishumar is another form of the Lord. The head of the Sishumar form is downward, and its body appears like that of a coiled snake. On the end of its tail is Dhruvaloka. On the body of the tail are the Prajapadis, Agni, Indra, and Dharma, and on the root of the tail are Datta and Vidatta. On its waist are the seven great sages. The entire body of the Sishumar faces towards its right and appears like a coil of stars. On the right side of this coil are the 14 prominent stars from Abhijit to Punavasu, and on the left side are the 14 prominent stars from Pusha to Uttarasada. The stars known as Punavasu and Pusha are on the right and left hips of the Sishumar, and the stars known as Ardra and Ashlesha are on the right and left feet of the Sishumar. Other stars are also fixed on different sides of the Sishumar planetary system, according to the calculations of seven astronomers. To concentrate their minds, yogis worship the Sishumar planetary system, which is technically known as Kundalini Chakra. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, 
before, just just starting out, I um, I'd like to correct something. I, it was incorrect. Sushuma, I didn't understand. I haven't read this, and I speculated. <laughs> I thought the Sishuma referred to the seven planets of the sages that surrounded Dhruvaloka, but now I see that's not what Sishuma is. That's not what's being discussed here. So that's a correction. I didn't understand that correctly. I didn't hear that correctly. Sishumar is actually Kundalini Chakra. Text 1. Sukadeva Goswami continued, My dear king, 1,300,000 yojanas, which is 10,400,000 miles above the planets of the seven sages, is the place that learned scholars describe as the abode of Lord Vishnu. There, the son of Maharaj Uttanapada, the great devotee Maharaj Dhruva, still resides as the life source of all the living entities who live until the end of the creation. Agni, Indra, Prajapati, Kasyapa, and Dharma are all assembled there to offer him honor and respectful obeisances. They circumambulate him with their right sides toward him. I've already described the glorious activities of Maharaj Dhruva which was in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Wow. We know Dhruva Maharaj was the son of one of the queens of Maharaj Uttanapada, Uttanapada. But his mother was not one of the favorite queens, and he became insulted by one of his mother's co-wives and became very angry and, de and determined to have a kingdom greater than his father's, because he was insulted by his his mother's co-wife, the co one of the co-wives, that he would never be able to rule. Only her son would be able to rule. Furthermore, he couldn't even sit on the lap of his father. She pushed him away, and he became. He was only five years old. He became very, very, very upset. So he wanted a kingdom greater than his father's. So fighting spirit, a chatriya fighting spirit. And he, at five years old, he performed very great austerities and um, actually took instruction from Narada Muni. And because of the great devotee Narada Muni um, putting a word in for him to Lord Vishnu, uh, Lord Vishnu gave the child darshan, and when that happened, Dhruva was no longer interested in having the kingdom. <laughs> he could have cared less. He just wanted to stay connected through love and devotion to the Lord. That's all he cared about. He didn't want anything else. But um, Lord Vishnu said, but I, I'm still going to fulfill your desire, and you will have a kingdom greater than your father's. So we can see that Dhruva Maharaj is actually, he's so highly situated within the material creation that his planet is, so everything revolves around his planet. And the great demigods offer him honor and respects. He says here that um, he resides as the life source of all the living entities who live until the end of the creation. And they circumambulate him. So, yeah, be careful what you ask for. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Text two. Uh, careful what we desire. We be very careful. We should always simply desire to serve Krishna. To be connected with the Lord through devotional service. And hearing and chanting is devotional service. <laughs> yeah. 
So no matter what condition of life we find ourselves in, we can take shelter of the hearing and chanting. And the messages of Godhead as they come from the pure devotees, like in this Bhagavatam. And we can engage in service by simply by hearing from them as service. And chanting those glories wherever possible is a service. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. Hearing, chanting, remembering the Lord is actually a devotional service. Yeah. So, let's continue on with our devotional service here. <laughs> so, text two. Established by the supreme will of the supreme personality of Godhead, the pole star, which is the planet of Maharaj Dhruva, constantly shines as the central pivot for all the stars and planets. The unsleeping, invisible, most powerful time factor causes these luminaries to revolve around the pole star without cessation. That's also the planet where Lord Vishnu resides. Why does he reside there? Because his devotee is there. <laughs> mm. Prabhupada's commentary, it is distinctly stated herein that all the luminaries, the planets and stars, revolve by the influence of supreme time factor. The time factor is another feature of the supreme personality of Godhead. Everyone is under the influence of the time factor, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead is so kind and loves his devotee, Maharaj Dhruva, so much that he has placed all the luminaries under the control of Dhruva's planet and has arranged for the time factor to work under him or with his cooperation. Actually, everything is done according to the will and direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead but to make his devotee Dhruva the most important individual within the universe, the Lord has placed the activities of the time factor under his control. Okay. <laughs> Who can measure the potency of the pure devotee? Hey, Krishna. Krishna is conquered by the love of his pure devotee. Text three, when bulls are yoked together and tied to a central post to thresh rice, they tread around that pivot without deviating from their proper positions. One bull being closest to the post, another in the middle, and a third on the outside. Similarly, all the planets and all the hundreds and thousands of stars revolve around the pole star, the planet of Maharaj Dhruva in their respective orbits, some higher, some lower. Fastened by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to the machine of material nature, according to the results of their fruit of acts, they're driven around the pole star by the wind and will continue to be so until the end of creation. These planets float in the air within the vast sky, just as clouds with hundreds of tons of water float in the air or as the great Siena eagles, due to the results of past activities, fly high in the sky and have no chance of falling to the ground. Mm. Get a little uh, visualization there of these movements of these giant uh, planetary bodies. They're being driven by the wind, and they're rotating around the pole star, just like bulls and oxen that are yoked together to go around and around a post for threshing. Mm. Hmm. Okay. 
and according to the results of their fruitive activities is how they're fastened to this revolving yoked to this to this revolving around how they're connected hmm. and the planets are floating within the sky like clouds float now clouds always look soft and fluffy but there's hundreds of thousands of tons of water in the clouds but they're floating look like they're floating and evidently there's a great bird who can fly so high that he has no chance of falling to the ground. And Prabhupada's commentary. According to the description of this verse, the hundreds and thousands of stars and the great planets such as the sun, the moon, Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter are not clustered together because of the law of gravity or any similar idea of the modern scientists. These planets and stars are all servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda or Krishna. And according to his order, they sit in their chariots and travel in their respective orbits. The orbits in which they move are compared to machines given by material nature to the operating deities of the stars and planets who carry out the orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by revolving around Dhruvaloka which is occupied by the great devotee, Maharaj Dhruva. This is confirmed in Brahma Sanhita as follows. Yacha Cheresha Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Samasta Surama Tirase Shateja Yasyagnaya Brahmati Sambrita Kala Chakro Govinda Madi Purushan Tamaham Bajami I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, the supreme personality of Godhead, under whose control even the sun, which is considered to be the eye of the Lord, rotates within fixed orbit of eternal time. The sun is the king of all planetary systems and has unlimited potency in heat and light. This verse from Brahma Sanhita confirms that even the largest and most powerful planet, the sun, rotates within a fixed orbit, or Kala Chakra, in obedience to the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This has nothing to do with gravity or any other imaginary laws created by the material scientist. Material scientists want to avoid the ruling government of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, they imagine different conditions under which they suppose the planets move. The only condition, however, is the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All the various predominating deities of the planets are persons, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead is also a person. Supreme Personality orders the subordinate persons, the demigods of various names, to carry out his supreme will. This fact is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, wherein Krishna says, Mayad yakshena prakriti suryate sa characharam he tunani na kanteya jagati bari vartate. This material world is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rules, manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. The orbits of the planets resemble the bodies in which all living entities are seated because they're both machines controlled by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hmm. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Ishvara Sarvabhutana Mridesharjuna Tishtati Brahmayan Sarvabhutani Yantra Vardhani Maya Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. The machine given by material nature, whether the machine of the body or the machine of the orbit or Kala Chakra, 
works according to the orders given by Supreme Personality of Godhead. Supreme Personality of Godhead and material nature work together to maintain this great universe. And not only this universe, but also the millions of other universes beyond this one. The question of how the planets and stars are floating is also answered in this verse. It's not because of the laws of gravity. Rather, the planets and stars are unable to float by manipulations of the air. It is due to such manipulations that big, heavy clouds float and big eagles fly in the sky. Yeah, just consider that for a moment. And scientists are very much uh, attached to their understanding of gravity. Was it Newton? The apple dropped on his head, and he, <laughs> he figured, yeah, that's the law of gravity. And pulled that, the earth is pulling things to it. That's the law of gravity. Well, if that's the case, then why do the clouds float? There's hundreds of thousands of tons of water in these clouds. They're very, very heavy. Why are they floating? Just drifting along because of the air. manipulation of the air. So that's how the planets are also staying in orbit, is by wind and air. They say that outer space is a vacuum, there's nothing there. But from this, we can understand there is air. There are airs, different types of airs, undoubtedly. It is due to such manipulations that big heavy clouds float and big eagles fly in the sky. Modern airplanes, like 747 jets, work in a similar way by controlling the air. They float high in the sky, resisting the tendency to fall to earth. Such adjustments of the air are all made possible by the cooperation of the principles of Purusha, male, and Prakriti, female. By the cooperation of material nature, which is considered to be Prakriti, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is considered to be Purusha, all the affairs of the universe are going on nicely in their proper order. There's a dynamic there. <laughs> it's an absolute dynamic in its purest form is the personality of Godhead, Sri Sri Radha Krishna. But we see the personality of Godhead manifest in many, 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 many ways. This is another way of manifesting his is manifest. By the cooperation of material nature, Prakriti, and the personality of Godhead, Purusha, all the affairs of the universe are going on nicely. Prakriti, material nature, is also described in Brahma Samhita. Shristi stiti pralaya sadhana shakti reka Chayeva yasya bhuvanani bibarti durga Ichanu rupam api yasya cha chastata sa Govindamadi purisham tamaham bhajami The external potency maya, who is of the nature of the shadow of the chit spiritual potency, is worshipped by all people as Durga, the creating, preserving, and destroying agency of this mundane world. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, in accordance with whose will Durga conducts herself. 
Material nature, the external energy of the Supreme Lord, is also known as Durga, or the female energy that protects the great fort of this universe. The word Durga means fort. This universe is just like a great fort in which all the conditioned souls are kept. They cannot leave it unless they're liberated by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord himself declares in Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma chame divyam evam yo patha chatva dehan puna janma naiti mamiti surjuna one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Thus, simply by Krishna consciousness, by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can be liberated, or in other words, one can be released from the great fort of this universe and go outside it to the spiritual world. In this uh, sentence, Prabhupada's sentence, he says, thus simply by Krishna consciousness. When we see that, we, we think by devotional service to Krishna, because there's no other way to become conscious of Krishna other than through devotional service. And when we see in the sentence also, by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we think of the devotee. So there's nothing mechanical about being Krishna conscious. It's not a simply a mental exercise. I'm Krishna conscious. Devotional service is the path to Krishna consciousness. And by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is through his representative, his devotee who is the embodiment of that devotional principle. So, continuing on, it's also significant that the predominating deities of even the greatest planets have been offered their exalted posts because of the very valuable pious activities they performed in previous births. This is indicated herein by the word karma, nirmita, gataya. For example, as we've previously discussed, the moon is called jiva, which means that he is a living entity like us. But because of his pious activities, he's been appointed to a post as the moon god. Similarly, all the demigods are living entities who have been appointed by the, to their various posts as the masters of the moon, the earth, Venus, and so on, because of their great service and pious acts. Only the predominating deity of the sun, Surya Narayan, is an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Maharaj Dhruva, the predominating deity of Dhruva Loka, is also a living entity. Thus, there are two kinds of entities, the Supreme Entity, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in the ordinary living entity, the jiva, nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam. All the demigods are engaged in the service of the Lord, and only by such an arrangement are the affairs of the universe going on. So there's the cooperation between the prakriti and the purusha. The, these great personalities are in the position of prakriti, the subordinate of serving the Lord, who here we understand the predominating deity of the sun is an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All others are jivas, all jivas, great powerful deities like the moon god. If someone performs those pious activities, they can have that position. They can be the god of the moon, moon god. Actually, everyone's a little god anyway. The gods and goddesses of their household affairs, of their industry, of their government, of their farming plot. <laughs> mm. 
the 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 derelict is he's got his corner it's his corner he stands there and begs on his corner <laughs> he's the predominating deity of that corner for begging <laughs> and everyone is engaged according to their pious or impious activities and they get a suitable body so these personalities to be to have that jurisdiction of the moon planet what pious activities they must have performed but for a devotee they're not interested <laughs> if Krishna wants them to be in the moon planet as the predominating deity as long as they can be Krishna conscious and engage in devotional service then what is it birth after birth Lord Chaitanya prays and we want to remember you be engaged in your devotional service birth after birth so but for the sake of being a moon god and controlling everything yeah. Yeah. Like Juva said, no, no, I wanted that until I saw you. I wanted to have a kingdom so great it was greater than my father's even. But now that I've come in contact with you, I have been consumed by the desire for devotional service. It's like a piece of broken glass to me. A uh, piece of broken glass can be kind of glittery if it catches the sunlight just right. <laughs> but it's just a piece of broken glass. It's only a reflection through matter. The ever-changing, controlled by time, elements the inferior energy pleasure is there in controlling the inferior energy <laughs> in imitation of the supreme god so but they're great great souls nonetheless are pretty overwhelming and they are serving the Lord under his direction so offer all respects to the demigods very responsible post within the material world awesome continuing on Regarding the great eagles mentioned in this verse, it's understood that there are eagles so big that they can prey on big elephants. It's like we hear about the Timangilla fish in the ocean. They're so big they can swallow whales. So here there's a description of these eagles that they can actually swoop down and grab up an elephant for a snack. They fly so high, they can travel from one planet to another. And they aren't ordinary birds. They start flying in one planet and land in another. And while in flight, they lay their eggs to hatch into other birds while falling through the air. Oh, okay. I didn't read that right. They start flying in one planet and land in another while in flight. They lay eggs that hatch into other birds while falling through the air. Hmm. In Sanskrit, such eagles are called shena. Under the present circumstances, of course, we cannot see such huge birds. But at least we know of eagles that can capture monkeys and then throw them down to kill and eat them. Similarly, it's understood that there are gigantic birds carry off elephants, kill them and eat them. Hmm. Wow. 
The two examples of the eagle and the cloud are sufficient to prove that flying and floating can be made possible through adjustments of the air. The planets, in a similar way, are floating because material nature adjusts the air according to the orders of the Supreme Lord. It could be said that these adjustments constitute the law of gravity, but in any case, one must accept that these laws are made by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The so-called scientists have no control over them. The scientists can falsely, improperly declare there is no God, but this is not a fact. Text 4. This great machine, consisting of stars and planets, resembles the form of a sishumar, a dolphin, in the water. It is sometimes considered an incarnation of Krishna, Vasudeva. Great yogis meditate upon Vasudeva in this form because it's actually visible. Commentary. Transcendentalists such as yogis, whose minds cannot accommodate the form of the Lord, prefer to visualize something very great, such as Virata Purusha. Therefore, some yogis contemplate this imaginary Sushumar to be swimming in the sky, the way a dolphin swims in water. They meditate upon it as the Virata Rupa, the gigantic form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Takes five. This form of the Sushumar has its head downward and its body coiled. On the end of its tail is the planet of Druva. On the body of its tail are the planets of the demigods, Prajapati, Agni, Indra, and Dharma. And at the base of its tail are the planets of the demigods, Datta and Vidatta. Where the hips might be on the Sishumar are the seven saintly sages like Vashishta and Angira. The coiled body of the Sishumar chakra turns toward its right side on which the 14 constellations from Abhijit to Punarvasu are located. On its left side are the 14 stars from Pusha to Uttarasada. Thus its body is balanced because its sides are occupied by an equal number of stars. On the back of the Sishumar is the group of stars known as Ajaviti, and on its abdomen is the Ganges that flows in the sky, the Milky Way. Text 6. On the right and left sides, where the loins might be on the Sushuma Chakra, are the stars named Punarvasu and Pusya. Ardra and Aslesha are on its right and left feet. Abhijit and Uttarasada are on its right and left nostrils. Shravana, Purvasada, are at its right and left eyes. Danishta and Mula are on its right and left ears. The eight stars from Maga and Anuradha, which mark the southern course, are on the ribs of the left of its body. And the eight stars from Mrigashirsha to Purvabhadra, which mark the northern course, are on the ribs on the right side. Satabishi and Jesta are on the right and left shoulders. So this is visible in the night sky. A person knows where to look and how to identify and first find the pole star. And then this can be traced out, this Sushumar form. It can be traced out in the shape of a dolphin. Text 7. On the upper chin of the Sushumar is Agasti. On its lower chin, Yamaraj. On its mouth, Mars. On its genital, Saturn. On the back of its neck, Jupiter. On its chest, the sun. And within the core of its heart, Orion. Wow. <laughs> within its mind is the moon. On its navel, Venus. On its breasts, the Asvini Kumaras. Within its life air, which is known as Pranapana, is Mercury. On its neck is Rahu. All over its body are comets, 
and in its pores are the numerous stars. So the yogis meditate on this form and it's visible. It can be seen in the night sky. Text 8. My dear king, the body of the Sishumara is thus described should be considered the external form of Lord Vishnu, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Morning, noon, and evening, one should silently observe the form of the Lord as the Sishumar Chakra and worship him with this mantra, O Lord who has assumed the form of time, O resting place of all the planets moving in different orbits, O master of all demigods, O supreme person, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you and meditate upon you. So that's the mantra. Text nine. Who should do that? Let me see. The one should. This is uh, Sukadev Goswami tells the king. A person should do this. Hmm. Text 9. The body of the Supreme Lord Vishnu, which forms the Shishuma Chakra, is the resting place for all the demigods and all the stars and planets. One who chants this mantra to worship that Supreme Person three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, will surely be freed from all sinful reactions. If one simply offers his obeisances to this form or remembers this form three times a day, all his recent sinful activities will be destroyed. Hmm. So three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, is the Brahmins chant the Gayatri mantra to, to be uh, given that mantra in disciplic succession Brahminical, qualify Brahminically to chant that mantra, but evidently anyone could chant this mantra morning, noon, and evening, and they would become free from all sinful activities. And we see this mantra from this Bhagavatam verse could receive this mantra. This is the advice of Sukadeva Goswami. Anyone can do that. Hmm. It doesn't say that he will attain devotional service and go back to the spiritual sky, but it does it could be helpful. It does say to be freed from all sinful reactions. Prabhupada's commentary summarizing the entire description of the planetary systems of the universe. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, the one who is able to meditate upon this arrangement as the Virata Rupa or Vishva Rupa, the external body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and worship him three times a day by meditation will always be free from all sinful reactions. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur estimates that Dhruvaloka, the pole star, is 3,800,000 yojanas above the sun. Above Dhruvaloka, by 10 million yojanas, is Maharloka. And above Maharloka, by 20 million yojanas, is Janaloka. Above Janaloka, by 80 million yojanas, is Tapaloka. Above Tapaloka by 120 million yojanas is Satyaloka. Thus, the distance from the sun to Satyaloka is 233,800,000 yojanas, which equals 1,870,400,000 miles. The Vaikuntha planets begin 26 
million two hundred thousand yojanas or two hundred and nine million six hundred and thousand miles above Satyaloka. Thus, the Vishnu Puranas describe the covering of the universe is 260 million yojanas or 2 billion 80 million miles away from the sun. The distance from the sun to the earth the lower planetary systems called Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Talata, Talatala, Mahatala, Rasatala, and Pat Patala. Below these lower planets by 30,000 yojanas, Seshanag is lying on the Garbhadak Ocean. That ocean is 249,800 yojanas deep. Thus, the total diameter of the universe is approximately 500 million yojanas or 4 billion miles. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the fifth canto, 23rd chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Sishumar Planetary System. Thank you very much.